Hello, my name is Jeremy Mayo, and welcome to my new free video training series. A bit about myself, I'm an MFA candidate in lighting design at the University of Cincinnati, as well as a freelance designer, programmer, electrician, systems integrator, and lighting artist. I wanted to start making these videos because I noticed some topics I deal with a lot in lighting that people might be unfamiliar with or have trouble understanding. As always, these videos are free, though if you like the content, please consider donating via the links soon to come on my website. Today, we're going to be talking about connecting ETC Nomad to MA on PC and MA 3D. Now, you might be wondering why anybody might want to do this, especially with ETC about to release EOS 3.0, which includes the augmented visualizer natively. Admittedly, it's a limited case scenario, though it's an interesting exercise in networking and connecting systems together. And who knows, maybe you might have some touring show one day that needs to transfer consoles, and you might need to set up some sort of connection. So, some assumptions before we actually start the tutorial. We are on the Windows operating system. This can be set up on Mac as well with a couple of changes, though we're not going to be talking about those in this video. If you're on Mac and you're very, very curious and dying to learn about this, please just shoot me an email. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Of course, you need access to both the EOS Nomad software and MA on PC, as well as MA 3D. For this video, we are working on Nomad version 2.9.1, Grand MA on PC version 3.8, and MA 3D version 3.8, all of which are current as of the release of this video. Now before we get started with any of the actual lighting software, we're going to go ahead and need to set up some network properties on our computer. So the first thing we're going to do is open up the device manager in Windows. Now in Windows 10, the easiest way to do that is to go to the bottom left corner of your screen and right click on the Windows start menu icon. Unfortunately, that's covered up by the, ban the banner on this video. But if you just right click down there and head to device manager, you'll get this window. Now this is just a manager Windows has to show every device on your computer. What we need to do is we're going to add a new network adapter. So we're going to go up to action and sometimes these uh, take a while to populate so I'll just give it a second to think. So if we click on network adapters, we're going to go to action, add legacy hardware. Now in the add hardware wizard, we're going to go ahead and click next. Now we're going to change this option to install the hardware that I manually select from a list. We're going to hit next. We're going to scroll back down to network adapters, hit next. Under Manufacturer, we're going to scroll down to Microsoft. And we are going to select the Microsoft KM Test Loopback Adapter. We'll hit Next again. And Next again. And there we go. It's installed the adapter. Now, if we open up our Network Properties, which I'm going to do from the bottom right of my computer, uh, and right-clicking on this small network icon. Apologies again, you won't be able to see this. I'll open up Network and Internet Settings, and you should be able to find your way to a screen like this. You can also get here from the Control Panel and a couple of other places like that. We're going to go to Change Adapter Options. And now, if you see here, I have an option for Ethernet 2, which is the Microsoft KM Test Loopback Adapter. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to loopback. And next, I'm going to right click again and go to properties. Now in this menu, we need to go to the IPv4 properties, internet protocol version four, and we're going to hit properties again to get this screen. Now here, we, instead of obtaining an IP address automatically, we want to use the following IP. We want to change this to be 10.0.0.100 for the IP address. 
and subnet mask, we're going to use 255, 255, 2550. For default gateway, we'll do 10.0.0.1. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. We can close out of this. Now, something very important is that this is the only network adapter that your computer is using. So what we want to do is disable any other adapter that your computer might be using. So I've already done that on my computer. You can see these all say disabled. On your device, you're going to want to right click any of these. And instead of enable, this will say disable. So just a proof of concept, I'll re-enable this. And then you want all of these to be disabled so that this adapter is the only one your computer can be using. Once that's all done, we can exit out of these. And now we can start working in our lighting software. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the EOS side of things. Now I have a two universe output dongle plugged in right now, though you do not need a licensed dongle to do this connection. Uh, this will run perfectly fine in the offline with Viz mode. Uh, there are just some limitations ETC puts on. If you're running in the offline with Viz mode, uh, random addresses will periodically flash and sometimes the entire rig will also flash. Under settings, First, in general, you want to make sure that full screen offline editor is not checked. Otherwise, you're going to have a difficult time navigating some of these windows we're about to have open. And offline editor windows, I'm going to have this set to one, but you can set this to whatever number is great for your workflow. Usually when I'm programming, I'll have this set to four and I'll have four windows set up in a tile arrangement kind of like this and I'll have my visualizer open on my other monitor. Next, we're gonna to wanna to hop into network settings. I'll go ahead and maximize this window. Up at the top, we wanna to confirm that the console is using loopback as its network adapter. We wanna make sure that the IP address is the same one that we set in that property window before, 10.0.0.100. Same subnet mask as before and same default gateway. Now, if you're more versed in network, networking topics in general, you might be wondering why we set a custom address in the 10 range. That's actually very important as the MA software will not allow certain connections from certain IP ranges. I'm not entirely sure why, but if you try to use a different IP range, you're going to have difficulties making this work. Next, under output protocols, we're going to be using ArtNet for this connection. So we want to make sure that ArtNet is enabled on our loopback adapter, and we want to make sure it's one of the default protocols. It doesn't matter if you have additional protocols enabled as well, though we just want to make sure ArtNet is enabled as one of the default protocols. We want to make sure it's directed broadcast, and we're starting at universe zero. Now, unless you have settings mixed up from some previous project, you shouldn't need to change any of these other options. You should have DHCP turned off for this. We want to make sure that we are 100% using a static IP. And we should be good to go. So we'll accept these, and we'll go ahead and boot into the Nomad software. Now I'll create a new show. If you have a show already built, that's totally completely fine. Though for the purposes of this video, I'm going to just start with a fresh patch to show you guys what's happening. So in my new show file, I'm going to go ahead and patch just one fixture. I'll patch channel 1 as a Verilite 3500 spot. And I'll patch that at address 1 slash 1. Now we are completely all set up on the EO side. That's all we need to do. Now I'm going to hop over onto the MA side of things. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Grand MA on PC. I'm going to go ahead over to Setup. Under MA Network Control, we want to go ahead and create a new session. 
So before we create the session, we want to make sure that the station IP is going to be this same loopback IP that we set up, this 10.0.0.100. That's highlighted yellow, so that's correct. That's the one that's going to be used for our session. If you have a different IP highlighted, you just want to make sure you change it to this one. You're going to go ahead and create that session. Great, there we go. Actually, I apologize, I'm actually going to create a, a new show just to completely make sure this is completely fresh for you guys. There we go. So, same thing, make sure our session is still there, great. Next, I'm going to go to Network Protocols. I'm going to go to Artnet, which should be the first option. We're going to change this so that its mode is input. So we're just going to right click there and change to input because what's happening is be we're sending Artnet from EOS to MA. So it's expecting Artnet input. And we need to also enable Artnet input active over here. It's now yellow, which means it's turned on. We want to make sure network DMX if alone is also active. And then the default settings are what you need, which should be 18100. Zero, zero. If you're using more than eight universes for your show, you might need to change this number eight to something higher. Now that we're set up to receive Artnet, we're going to go ahead and set up our connection to MA3D. So I'll go ahead and open MA3D. And we wanna make sure that this is looking for the same network settings that we're using for Grand MA2 on PC. So we're going to go to File, Settings, Network, and conveniently we're already using that correct IP. If this is set to something other than 10.0.0.100, you want to make sure you change it to this so that we can make a connection. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to go back into setup on the on PC side of things. We're going to go to MA network configuration. We're going to go to 3D and we are going to add a new 3D session. We have our station here at 10.0.0.100. That's great. Host name will be the name of your computer. Mine happens to be Darkstar. We're going to make sure that session member is set to yes and our user is administrator. Now you can see we populated those and we've connected, we are green, and on MA3D we now have the green pulsing heart, meaning that we're connected. Now the very important thing is that for this connection to work, the patch you have in EOS needs to be the exact same patch you have in MA on PC. So real quick, we're gonna duplicate that patch, which for us is just the one fixture. So we'll go to Setup, Patch and Fixture Schedule. We'll create a new layer. And we'll go ahead and patch down just one Verilite 3500 spot. And again, that's patched at 1 slash 1 on EOS. So we're going to patch that at 1.001 1 .001 on MA. There we go. Now you can see MA3D updated, and we now have a fixture in here. There we go. Drag that up so we can see it. Great. Now, the last thing that we need to do for this connection to work is that we need to type a command in GrandMA2 on PC to disable any control that this is having. So we're going to type park DMX universe one at zero. Now we confirm that that worked by just opening a new screen, taking a look at the DMX sheet and we can see these are all now parked. Now, if we go back to EOS 
and put channel 1 at full, you can see in MA3D our fixture comes on. And there you have it. We have a complete connection between ETC Nomad and MA on 3D. So we have full pan and tilt control, confirming. We have color control. And we are all set to go. Now, you can come into this with a complete show file in EOS already ready to go, completely patched down with cues and other information. All you'll need to do is then just make sure that you duplicate the patch on the MA side of things. Uh, there are some plugins where you can actually just import straight from EOS and things like that, or export a CSV fat patch and make things very quick. Um, though we're not going to cover <coughs> anything like that in this video. And that's all there is to it. As always, if you have questions, feel free to shoot me an email or get in touch any way you would like. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great day.